Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Matt, and with me today is Christy, John, Mike, and Riley. And today we're going to be talking about technology, the positives and negatives. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody has anything they'd like to start with. Drinks, anything like that? Uh, I'd like to say something. I'm drinking a Sour 4 from Valley Center Brewery. Excellent. It's excellent. It's really good. It's very sour, very lemony. It's Super probably sour. the sourest Super beer sour. I've ever had. Oh. Uh, all truth be told. And it's just an excellent, excellent beer. It's like apple cider vinegar, but better. <laughs> <laughs> we had that flown in from Valley Center. Flown in from Valley Center. Flown in, yes. <laughs> Steve's actually in the uh, desert. Yes. We won't tell you which one. Yeah. We're going to go with the Atacama for now. <laughs> <laughs> secret mission. Yes, a secret mission. The Atacama Desert. Damn, that's far away. Yes, and very dry. Yeah, <laughs> as deserts tend to be. Any other fermented beverages? Tea. Tea? Yeah. That could be fermented. Master Brew, kombucha. Rum and Coke for me tonight. Right on. <laughs> so technology, uh, I mean, there are plenty of aspects of this, but I, I'd like to start off with, right now there's a lot of technology, artificial intelligence. There are many moral issues when it comes to it. Uh, Self-driving cars is one thing I'd like to start with. When you're talking about a car, you're talking about something where you're making life and death decisions, and you're talking about if you're going to have an accident, is the car going to hit a person, or is it going to slam mm, into a wall? Is it going to avoid yeah. the computer and they're or malfunction or a, or and the gas animal. accelerate and lock the doors? I mean, it's going to have to make these decisions. Yeah, uh, they're, they're they're doing this programming now. Like these are things that are actually affecting us. We could ask yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael Hastings' uh, ghost on that. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I think that uh, y- you need to be very cautious when you're talking about these are moral issues. When you are you going to have it run over a kid or run into a wall? I mean, like, and who are the people who are programming uh, these things? And yeah, sure. Are, are, is there a debate going on? Is there a discussion? I, I know that there are. Uh, firms working on this, but are are the regular populace talking about this? Mm, not no. a whole lot. No. So. <laughs> Maybe the car no platform really spits quite. the driver out in a styrofoam cocoon and then vaporizes <laughs> itself. I'm sorry, well, can you repeat that? I mean, that's cool. <laughs> the thought of it is very entertaining and plausible, I suppose. They're saying there, some, there could you know, be another scenario, but uh, still, I'm trying to yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, they've already got these things on the road. They're driving no, around. No, I know, you're right. Absolutely us, not. And, like, right. they're not, nobody's really discussing about what, what are they programming Is that available? To do? I think what are they're, those oh, yeah, they're on the roads about? already. No, I mean, are oh, algorithms the, What they're programming to do? I don't know. The only thing I saw was an article that was actively reinforcing the safety of it so I didn't bother to see who wrote the article or you know what you know how it was funded or whatever but yeah you can just I see would where sense that it wouldn't um, well I guess with um, face recognition it, it could sense that it's a being I would say it was just an object that is trying to avoid you know I don't know if it would say a, a person versus a wall it would just it's an object it has to avoid well, you, it. yeah mean, you're right I just don't know how so, intelligent it is yet. Ex- yeah, that's the problem with right. it is we don't really know what's right. going on, and right. we're and these things aren't being discussed much in the general right. yeah. population. I'm still thinking of John's e- ejector seat of like you know it, it <laughs> shoots you out right, and then like you're in a full body airbag and it goes poof, you know and you bounce around and you get back up and then perfect advertising and it just says Michelin on it. So you're there's, just some, going, there's, yeah, there's some there's some there's some engineers right. working so on that now, and yeah. they can call it you know yeah. the the. the John, uh, self there you go. vaporizing you're gonna get safety named. car. Yeah, <laughs> the product's gonna be named after you. Yeah, I mean, there. From what I've read, there, there, there are discussions about you could have there different companies could use different programming for this, and you you basically get to choose. I believe this is more ethically, so I'm gonna choose this brand because oh, in such a situation, it, it makes this action. Yeah. Uh, so I think that there is some consumer decision, but I think that all of this needs to be openly publicized about what exactly these decisions these automatic machines are making for Should us. Should we go to Google and ask them, request that information? I think that could be a good move. I mean, I that's definitely a start. It is. I mean, I yeah. I look at all the robots that DARPA and Google and Boston Dynamics that Google bought. These things they're they're using for military purposes. So is that who who 
they bought to do they've all the, the Google car bought stuff? Uh, yeah. Boston Dynamics. Okay. Uh, Google's been buying up a lot of Dude, artificial intelligence is. and yeah. robotic yeah. companies. Oh, yeah. And that's a you know that's a uh, a good point. Like you're saying, you know, like uh, there's all these different AIs and stuff that they're working on, and the, yeah. you know, the idea of you know having that hooked up to a car. Like my little experience with like new technology in a car is is uh, me and some friends rented a car uh, last weekend. And uh, every car that I, you know, on myself has always been like, you know, older, you know. Yeah. I think the newest car I ever had was 2003, I think, 2006. Beat me, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice truck, by the way. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, I'm in the back seat of the car and I noticed that there's no little button you to either push and have the electric locks go up or just pull it up, you know, that one. It's just there's a little light there where it used to be. I'm like, so what do I push on that? And the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wait, there's no actual way for me to manually open this lock if I need to. And I'm like, yeah. I don't like this at all. No. No way at all? Like, there's not even an electric hmm. button at all? Like, I don't like this, you know? Like, I mean, we're relying more and more on technology. And, uh, and the problem with that is we are giving up the experience for humans to know how to do these things. Uh -huh. and if we lose that experience... How are we going to pass that along? I mean, in the event of, like, I mean, I'm sure you all know, but like solar flares, I mean, we could have, what if, what if we did have a grid failure or what if something did happen and we had a mass loss of technology, data, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and now nobody has a backup, nobody actually knows this knowledge. It was left to a computer. Well, I mean, that's a really good point, especially in regards to how dependent we are on the technological you know, communications Don't worry. and the government's technology. got like that redundant government, you know, the one that's like the the, the next layer that's all the super secret government. Yeah, the, yeah, right, yeah. We'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, wait, I don't, yeah. They've got their they, they've got their own EMP EMP proof bunker, they'll be fine. They got it all under control. Humanity will go on, but you yeah. know, well, how will the masses fare in a situation where you have like you're saying like an EMT mass, you know, telecommunications we'd adapt. and technologies. Or we, don't. or we die. Or we die. Yeah, and so you'd have fun. I'd have fun. Yeah, well, you know. No, you fun would. You'd learn would. to have fun. Yeah, it would be more simple. You would learn to do the things you'd that you did You'd have to definitely do. adapt to yeah. survive, no it doubt. It would be a hard, yeah, adjustment. Yeah. It would be a hard adjustment because you think about, like, okay, let's say that happens, right? And all of a sudden, you know, gas stations don't have gas within a matter of hours or, you know, you know, Our whatever. food supply, food Looking supply out. gone. Everything. You know, grocery stores yeah. empty. What then do you, you know? Got, how many that people that are self-sustaining to a degree where they could band together and be able to, you know, really yeah, and then you pull through? Those that will choose to rape and pillage on exactly, the right. yeah, and then you're you got to deal with. So, yeah, being technologically dependent, you know, in that aspect of our culture is, you know, potentially detrimental. Yeah. In this whole EMP scenario, I'm only going to be happy no, yeah, if yeah. I get to hook up horses to an old Corvette and like sit in like the oh, like I the sunroof, that. you know, if like you get the you know, yeah, because yeah. 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 that would just be hilarious, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just you know, turn it into like a coach and be on there and be like, hey, this Corvette's got five horses, yeah, five horses <laughs> <You know? laughs> behind these wheels. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm going to 60 day. and never. <laughs> huh? Zero to yeah, 60 and never. <laughs> yeah, What's up, ladies? Well, five horses? Pulling a couple horses, you two. Pulling a five Corvette, horses? though? I don't know. Pulling a Corvette? No, never. No, never? No, no. Downhill. Downhill. Okay. Downhill. No. Downhill. 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 Downhill, that's right. Downhill. They jump in. A very steep hill. Up. <laughs> yeah, to keep up with, from the Corvette <laughs> running them over. You have to. You were saying Google. I remember listening to an interview of a future technology expert. He's the one who... I can't tell you which podcast it was or his name, but he, he mentioned that they were talking about um, uh, increasing IQ by like a thousand points. Like, First of like, all. Like a year, a year away from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was also talking about how there are some who, whose grand idea is that Google will become sentient. That Google. I wouldn't be surprised wow. if they were the one. Uh, the, to Google start that is off. it. Not you know like what we call Google is to be the grand plan is for it to wow. become. Well, Cleverbot's getting pretty creepy, isn't it? Terminator what is Skynet? Yeah. What is it? Skynet. I guess from Terminator, from Terminator Two. It's oh. like an you know uh, artificial it's the all knowing uh, art that that well, decided to attack humanity. Adding well, to well, Christie's so. movie oh, list. I mean, I've seen him. I've seen him. I'm sorry. Well, but I I think it was Elon Musk. I may have mentioned this on one of the episodes, but. 
He, he uh, actually started buying up a bunch of artificial intelligence specifically because he is worried that it could go horribly wrong and kill all of us. Simply, he, I think the example he used was a spam filter. Uh, well, the, a computer could look at the stop spam. If you, you know, order a computer, stop spam. Well, the computer looks at it and says, oh, hey, computers make, or humans make all the spam. Let's just kill all the humans. Job done. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's a good chance yeah, that the computer will be you know, incredibly I mean, logical I, about I it, it rather than rational. To, yeah. yeah, it comes back to this question of like, you know, get that movie um, Ex Machina. What's it called? Ex Machina. Yeah. I don't know Ex how to Machina. Pronounce it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, touches on it's like okay, just because you build an artificial intelligence that is like perhaps you know, if not superior, uh, equal to man, superior. Um, Should you know? humankind then but what does that say where, where does that leave the heart and like the empathy and like the emotional you know complexity to go along with those emotions to be able to relate in a you know healthy non psychopathic type of dynamic right. and so I mean I guess it could be like you be like you know there's that uh the ad for like that like <laughs> that robot made or whatever you know that I guess yeah. I think Steve sent us the other yeah, day, yeah. and like I don't know, man. I guess that could be like programmed. So why did not we get empathetic? There. Why? I mean, what in evolution made us empathetic? It was in our best interest to okay, understand. So I think would that not be if an God, a, a sentient um, robot? I, I consider that the, the thing is, you have the thing with that is though, though. Well, like the yeah. okay, so like the difference between the ad made that was like online that we saw the other day and like a truly artificial superior, you know, singularity is a lot, uh, you know, the robot's been programmed to only do certain things, but a sentient thing can program itself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not right. An AI, you know, and, uh, yeah. Robot so is, it could, is, you know, yeah. whatever its logic right. told it right. to, it would be the ethical thing to right. do in, in in regards to its self programming. Right. And so, so yeah, that's the dilemma. There, there, uh, there was an interesting thing I had read a while back about a math problem that had been solved by a computer, and there was a proof done by a computer. Um, but the the proof was so complex that no human could ever solve this proof. <laughs> so could we actually say that this proof is correct if we, we cannot know, do it? Right. So if, we, if, we if something correct. is more intelligent than us, how are we, could we relate to them? Are, yeah. are we able we to? Them? Yeah. Mm. Like, would, would, they, would they be on a different consciousness? Or would they, could they relate to us? Yeah. Or or like could we relate like to them? Could we understand them? Right. Well, I mean, yeah. It's how would that relationship pan out in the dynamic of the relationship itself in regards to like what the implications were to the race or what have you, humanity? But it was interesting. The other day I was listening to, um, what was it called? I forget the name of it. Uh, something news. It, uh, in, the, in it, this guy was talking about he's very, you know, up on researching and being aware of you know, the latest in technology, and he was saying, like, within, I don't know, by 20, within the next five years, probably sooner by now, uh, they're going to have, like, a, a lens that you have, and, like, you can just close your eyes and feel like you're, like, you know, watching a screen. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. And then beyond that, within, like, another 10 whatever years, not very far from now, within our lifetimes, anyways. There was uh, a Futurama episode, right? What was it called? The uh, I yeah, iPhone, it? I think they called it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could be wrong. You know, they had a different yeah. name for I'm it. Not but it was sure, really but it was something. That, it was a play on iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what exactly that's, they that's used. That's good. See, Futurama is good comedy. Oh yeah. But um, you know, you know, just inter introducing like a, a chip or like, you know, I don't know how they described it, but. Basically, oh, I think it was like the crossing between, you know, human interface and like computers. Mm -hmm. They're talking about nanobots, implanting right. nanobots into minds. Yeah, exactly. Which is very dangerous in and my opinion. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> and what are they going to do? Uh, interface, basically the internet and tech, uh, computer technology with the they're human gonna mind. They're going to talk to our brain? Yes. I mean, the... Yeah. Oh, okay. So they, they, they so want to, yeah, interface. Yeah. yeah. I was, that's right. No, uh... They were even talking about studying the, the, the virus from rodents that goes to cats to humans. Toxoplasma mm. gondae, yeah. Yeah. They're actually using that as a model. Really? Right. And they yeah. don't even know a lot, everything <laughs> about that. Yeah, right, great. Right, Use right. that as a model. No, we're pretty like, sure this is how it works. Let's because, run with it. Because the, the virus programs the rat to want to be. Yes. 
to want to maybe around, even cats. maybe even aroused by cats. Yeah, it's driven drives the rats to cats. Yeah, and then. Every human who has ever had a cat pretty much has it in their head. So it's, it's actually, already in your brain. It's actually usually from consuming uh, meat that has been infected mm. by it. Um, from my understanding, at least. I think it's like one in ten people in the U.S. and one in five in the world. I could be wrong on those I, numbers. Wow, I just thought of something. Could we be consuming these little things in no, the and stuff? Sure. Nanobots? Yeah. I mean, no, if they I mean, wanted to get us, like... They could just nah. put it in our feet supply. I, I, don't think, well, if they, I don't know if it's no. cost efficient yet. Probably not, know. but just in case, I just... I, was, I don't know. What I was talking about, though, is just the, <laughs> the, the mechanism that makes the, the virus drive the rodent to the cat. That relationship in our brain, in other words, programming us through like a nanobot, a, a nanovirus thing in our brain, making us do something that they programmed. Essentially, and they could they could be there right now, right yeah, in all of us. Be. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, you know. Well, you wouldn't even necessarily have to have something like a, like a physical, you know, nanobot to be able to do that. I mean, in so far as like, yeah, <coughs> yeah, this yeah. is a tangent on its own, but like the occult sciences go, you know, like being able to use psychic forces to be able to influence people in necessarily not a, in volition of their will. So I mean, you know, in like studies, I think someone posted the other day or just today, maybe like. You know, conspiracy theories that seem all whacked out, but like when you get into it, like actually, you know, research. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I think you put. I, I shared it from right, somebody, but yeah, I did put it on my page somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was an interesting one. Yeah, crack does a good job sometimes. You know, because like the what was it the CIA or some branch of the government, uh, like we're studying like the possibilities of psychic, you know, like warfare and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they've had. I think Russia's been doing a lot of that for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were they were kind of almost known for it for yeah. a bit. But they uh I, I think in that particular article they were they were mentioning something like really simple that they were they're saying they were successful on, but who you know, who knows? They could be saying they're successful on it just to scare the shit out of people, whatever. But it was in, in it was uh impressing a certain number into a person's mind. Just a number. So like you know, have whatever like Radio frequency thing, be like you're thinking about number four. You're well, there's, thinking about number four, and then you know that's well, and they'll four, write it down. It's like yeah. that's a technically is like number of deaths. Uh, so if you're well, I just that, came that up like, as like, like, like <laughs> register, like oh doom doom doom. <laughs> but you know, I mean, there was something I believe I mean, it was from the fifties or sixties. I could be wrong on that. I think they called it the neurophone. That might be inaccurate. Yeah, yeah. But the, it, it was a uh, it was a certain frequency. And I can't remember the range it was in. But you could hear it in your head, but it wasn't audible. It, 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 it excited something in the brain where you could actually hear it in your head. It sounded different than normal uh, audio. That's but, cool. But the, uh, I met the guy who created it, the government, I think they, they like went in and took it from him and said, like, Sounds you can't have the patent. And yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty fucked up. You know, I mean, but just in case this all goes south, I'd just like to mention that I... I welcome our new robot overlords with open arms. You know? <laughs> just, this, this is going on YouTube with Google owns, so we, please don't kill us, future bots. Future bots. <laughs> don't kill us. Yeah, We're overlord. actually, you know, pretty amiable people. I don't know how good yeah. I'd be at point out a, a point to plow at gunpoint or anything. That probably wouldn't work out very well for me, but, you know. Yeah, so I think it's important to, if, if we are going to use technology to better our lives, that whatever we're using it for, we still need to pass that knowledge along in case something does happen. Yeah. We'll, like, put it inside, like, a Faraday, or what's it called? Not Faraday. I'm not yeah. sure the best way to store it, but something physical and non-digital. Yeah, is, is, right down oh, in a book. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, not, not, like, collection to save of the digital type thing. Not to save, like, and, and to continue to, to pass that TV. knowledge along and not just... In a non-technological <laughs> way. So yeah. So it does get passed down. Yes. The new things that get created from technology. We shouldn't give up. Right. We shouldn't give up any sort of like human aspect that has gotten to where we are. Give that up to technology is very dangerous. Yeah, I, I've said in previous previous episodes that <clears throat> I'm definitely not like anti-technology. It's a it's benign, you know, just like guns don't kill people, people kill people, and technology ultimately empowers people. All technology empowers. It's just to what end? So the ultimate issue is 
our processor and and what are we using that technology for? Yeah, and that's where I think the problem is, is that humans right now are are uh, a little wayward. You know, a, a large portion of it. Anyway. Yeah, I, I respect that. Yeah. And it, you, made, you said an interesting word there. Uh, like it's our processor. It's how we process. You know, the the empowering yeah. of technology and its force. And it made me think of uh, you know, like what you mean by that word, like processor, like. I'm just going to yeah. ask you, like, what do you mean? No, I, I, ultimately, I liken it to, we're talking about technology, so the brain is like the hard drive processor, and we are have different softwares on our hard drive, and that software is cultural software, generally speaking, to me. That's what I'm thinking, right? So it is the ego and the 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 cultural software we're running is how we see the world, you know what I mean? And um, uh, that could be probably pretty close to reality, or it could be way off from reality. It's interesting when you use the word ego there because it reminded me of a quote that Jung said where he says that, you know, because humankind has knowledge of their conscious ego, and the conscious ego, he says, though, is by and large or largely dependent upon, like, our, soul, our understanding of our social environment, and that's what we base so much of our ego on, is like our society and like our culture like you're right, getting at. Right. And so like getting back to something we were talking about earlier before the, the podcast, like the difference between like collectivism and that cultural impress of, you know, running our <laughs> processors at a certain, yeah. you know, <laughs> valuations and whatever, you know, kind of destructive tendencies potentially, you know, considering the forces controlling culture. Um, at the point, uh, versus the individual, you know, like what's, and I think that's getting back to like Jungian's like notion of uh, the process of individuation, which is all about, you know, right. cultur cultivating the individual's perspective and kind of, you know, taking into consideration the ego's position because it's valid and the social influences, you know, right. are important. Protecting us. Yeah, you know, and so it's like not, you know, completely you know, throwing out of hand collective, the collective impulse of, you know, the, the betterment of the all, but it's also this narrowing in on the individual, like, you know, getting back to that, you know, more base root fundamental, which, you know, further out and flowers into the cultural perspective of, of importance. And so, I th you know, it's, I think like we're getting at Matt, it, it's really important that we have a it's pretty loud. It's really loud. Social uh, coyote sideshow. Yeah, coyotes. <laughs> a social out there. You know, airplanes, public, coyotes. Yeah. Public. A lot going dialogue. on in Flagstaff, Arizona. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> Flagstaff, Arizona. <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> I love it here in AZ, man. <laughs> <laughs> AZ is a spot for me. I'm never leaving this place. Kind of like the OZ, but the AZ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was listening to. <laughs> I was listening to you guys got that. Like, right now. I was listening to you guys talk, and I, I was starting to think about how, uh, like linguistically, how like it, it, technology has it changed the way we we, we describe things in, in a way. So think about like I don't know, ten years ago, somebody would might describe the. Uh, or I mean, people still do, but I've noticed the way people talk about technology is different now. So it used to be that you would desc describe the computer's motherboard as the computer's brain, right? Mm -hmm. But now, we go because we just said it all right now, or at least variations of it, we all described, uh, you know, our own brains as a processor. See, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of interesting that, like, <laughs> you know, we, we're, instead of using, uh, instead of using, <laughs> personifying these objects, you know, by using our own definitions of that's the computer's eyes instead of a camera, all this sort of stuff, we're now using <laughs> that technology to describe ourselves, and I'm like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's kind of cool. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's interesting. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, it's, it's, yeah. So we are it. artificial intelligence. Mm, I mean, there's definitely a theory. Yeah. We that's if we were artificially yeah. created, I'm a sentient and if we're, artificial, artificial, yeah. we're intelligent, yeah. those are the two that is, right. as to whether or not well, we're I mean, artificial That's actually intelligence. a pretty common yeah. theory uh, that this is a simulation. Right. And there actually are people doing tests. Right. One of them I found interesting was... Like slamming... Uh, 
particles together and uh, well, different. <laughs> well, one of the one of the ways oh, they're doing that it that can never go wrong ever. Yeah. <laughs> just do that more and more. <laughs> but I guess what they're doing yeah, is sorry. they're measuring cosmic rays and the angle of cosmic rays, and if we are in a simulation, then uh, there there must be some sort of grid holding it all together, and if there are more. Basically, the amount of energy coming from different angles of cosmic rays, where they come from in the universe, if the if that is different, uh, some some have more energy than others. That's one clue, and there's actually a limit to how much energy a cosmic ray can have. So that's another clue. There there shouldn't be a limit, but there is, and we don't know why. Hmm. But yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. I, I was watching a show on it. It is interesting. You know, I want to say a few things about that, but I probably will fail to. So I'm gonna say at least one. And I'm kind of hesitant to, but I'm going to anyways. When I was uh, taking some medicine now. at uh, a shamanic type setting, I, uh, there was a fire, and I was like getting all grounded to the earth, and my hand in the sand, and this like field of like a like a, like a matrix or like what'd you say as like you can yeah. use a word a grid a, a grid, grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah a grid. grid like came out with a and I was like whoa. And I looked down at my hand, there's a scorpion about it good on my Ooh, hand, and I was wow. like, wow. Okay. <laughs> you know? That's and just so, got real. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think it's fascinating when you talk, you know, like Maya, with the Buddhist concept of Maya, like what the world, you know, people usually term it as like illusion. Like the world is an illusion, like we're all part of the imagination of like Vishnu is like, you know, the Godhead. The or one ourselves. The Godhead, you know, or yeah. future humans yeah, that have right. simulated yeah. this. Yeah. Well, you know, that gets into another. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's another can, yeah, whole... That's, yeah, we haven't got enough time yeah, to yeah. dive into all of those yeah. potential theories and implications. But, yeah, so I mean, but I mean, it, and it kind of, in a way, in a sense, in terms of the, the mystic outlook of, you know, the nature of reality, it kind of almost is that way. But it goes back to this thing that we were talking again off camera earlier about, you know, the concept of the universe as being like a hol holographic, or holographic, or... Holographic. Holographic, yeah. yeah, so it's you know, and, and it, it, it it disempowers and totally shatters the, the the world paradigm of you know today's controlling culture of, of hierarchy, because it's like there really is no you know stages of you know greater authority. It's all imbued within itself to be an equalizing. You know, there's authority, but it's all within the individual, uh, you know. Entity or experience, or, yeah, experience in like uh, a yeah, to me it's singularity of, singular of, the, of the individual organism, mm -hmm. yeah. perhaps the fractal view, you know, of uh, the universe in, in, in that sense. And so, that there isn't yeah. like that there's, the, there's there's a certain unifying you, you know, you, yeah, uniformity to things, Unif uniforming and, and as that, above, so below. There you go, as above, course, so below. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you go a lot of branches in that direction, but in different directions, but. It's fascinating stuff, but I mean, yeah, insofar as we're in the here and now, we definitely ought to, I think it goes back to something else we were saying in another episode about like progress for its own sake and not, you know, having like an intelligent. Yeah, we're not spirit. grounded then. Yeah, yeah, grounded, yeah, to the earth and, you know, We definitely should be rhythms. more conscious of how we are integrating technology into, into our, our lives. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Right. Let's some just good, good questions to ask ourselves and, and look deeper into some of these questions. That's what I love about the Amish. Yeah. That's what the Amish do, because yeah. the Amish aren't anti-technology. What right. they do is they sit down and they say, what are the implications of oh, this wow, technology cool. in our lives? And if they have, after their discussion, they say, no, I don't think that's going to be beneficial, they don't do oh, it. that's yeah. right. They, I didn't like, they have that. refrigerators, yeah. you know, they have washers yeah. and dryers, yeah. some, you know, they're not completely against technology. It's just, what are the implications of this technology for our society? For Isn't our it as long as there's not a wire? Like that's one of like, sure like nitty picky things I mean, that it's like as long as there's not an actual wire. So what they'll do with cell phones, they they'll they'll get a car battery and charge it with a car battery. I mean look at uh, look at what the US government yeah, does. External. They'll yeah. they'll they'll kill people based on their cell signal. Yeah. You know, yeah. just straight up your phone number. You, you know. If you're if they say you're a terrorist and they, they will bomb you just based on your cell phone. They've done it I mean uh, Yeah, as in uh not Bill Benny. Yeah, Bill Benny said no, not Bill Benny. Anyway, former director of the NSA. Yeah, communications we director. We kill. Not no. It wasn't Bill Benny that said it. It, it was the Casey Mukasey Mukasey. But anyway, he said we kill people on metadata. Yeah, that's a direct quote. Yeah, we kill wow. people on, meta, based on based metadata. Based on metadata. Yeah. yeah. 
Right, so that's coming that's from... That's comforting. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to wrap okay. up this. But on, on a more like, you know, kind of interesting note when it comes to technology, you know, mentioning the Amish, like, you know, is this something that's going to be beneficial to, to our, our society? So if you had a robot that was battery powered, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not actually, you know, you don't plug it in the wall. No, it's not wires, right, right, right. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it was a wire. Solar powered or something. A solar powered. Yeah, I mean, like, like, is it something like the Amish? Would they be okay with like a robot? Like you might be able to have like relations with of some sort. If it was programmed, right? It was properly programmed from higher authority to be a sex therapist. Yeah. Right. 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 That would be beneficial. Or if it was. It would be a teacher. It could be a teacher. It could be a teacher. It could be a teacher. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Robot sex ed teacher, right? I think we're out of time, guys. I think we're out of time. Damn it. We're gonna have to talk about this next week. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Thanks for listening. Thank have a good night. Thank you.